Welcome to Mariposa Will and Mills Needle Felting Basics and Kit Instruction. For those of you new to felting and deciding to try a new craft, let me give you a small intro. Basically, felting is causing wool fibers to intermingle and mat together. This can be accomplished in a couple ways. Wet felting is one way, hot water, little soap, and a lot of friction. The other way is needle felting, with which I will demonstrate later on in the video. Felting needles have barbs and uh, they grab on to other fibers, to the wool fibers, as it's poked into the wool, causing this intermingling or felting. It always is best to use a surface, such as a foam or a rice pad, um, because the needles are very sharp. This kit provides all needed supplies to start this new fun, easy hobby. Let's get started. Hi, welcome to Adventure Awaits Felton Kit Instructions. So you notice that we have a pink and navy mat. That's your canvas. There is a special feature of an overlay to give you a head start on applying color in a blended way. So the purple part is designed to be at the bottom but you can take off the colors that you need and uh, just decide how much blue, how much purple, or how much sea foam that you want to appear on your picture. So what I'll do is just divide it out what, what colors I want to use. As you see that what's left is some blended colors there. I'm just going to shift it over. So you just use it how you want your colors to appear. It's just to give you a head start. Okay, so once we have that blocked out, the colors decided, we'll start anchoring it down and when I say anchoring it down, I'm meaning just to felt it down using the needle that's provided. So poking repeatedly is going to cause a intermingling and felting. So this may take a bit of time, so don't rush it. Um, so in essence, what you're trying to do is just anchor down those colors, but you don't need to go very deep into the mat because if you do your fibers will disappear within the foam so anchor it down until you've given attention to the whole mat So during the application of the overlay, other colors can be added, such as uh, the light color for the clouds and parts of the colors of the sunrise, the purple, the red, pink, and yellow. Still using the overlay application, the mountain ranges can take shape as well. So as you go, you can add these colors and block them in. You're just kind of adding so that you can blend them as you go. So we're adding the red for the sunset, just adding those colors in that are going to be blended together to give a soft effect. So let's anchor that down. The small bits of colors that you've added, so it's gonna give a, a blended effect. 
because less is more when you're applying these colors you just take off small bits and if you want to add more later then that's the next layer that you would do so I just want to anchor those down Still blocking in colors. Just adding the purple to give a more of a definition to the horizon line. We'll create that our, our mountain range our distant mountain range. So taking small bits, anchoring it down, giving a little tug will help to keep a slender line in our rovings. Just giving a little tug and as you're pulling the fibers will be disappearing and then you're having a small uh, tapered edge. This is kind of what you want have a cylinder tapered edge when you're working with that um, those distant mountain ranges just adding a bit of darkness down at the bottom not necessarily needed uh, because we'll be adding our our tree line soon it's giving a bit of the purple into the sky as well. Just using all of those colors is nice in the sky, just to kind of gives a variety. So to continue with the mountain ranges, we're just going to give a little bit of lightness. So using the light blue to define our mountain ranges there. And anchor that down. So just adding some depth in the foreground there for mountain ranges. Um, it's probably not necessary depending on your plan for your, your trees in the foreground. But just in case you can see beyond the trees, adding the purple would be a nice, uh, a nice place to have that depth. So you notice I'm pulling away some of it because I don't feel like it's really necessary. So that's the good thing about felting at this stage. If you don't like it, you can just pull it up. So next, we'll move on to the tree line. I'll just use the, the evergreen or the darker green that you have. And We'll just mark the placement of those trees. Just pinching off a bit. 
going to anchor down some solitary lines and then just pull away the excess. So we're just going to mark where our trees are and then we're going to go back in and give them fullness. So this is our first layer of trees. So we're working from back to front. So the darker green and then we'll layer it with the lighter green. So once we get our placement of all of our trees, then we'll move on to the other color. But just keep in mind when you are working with this first layer of trees, you want to have your high points at the side and lower toward the middle. So it creates just a little dip I'm just talking about composition right now. So you want to, because your focal point is more the sun and the sunset, or I should say sunrise. So we want to have, we want to frame it in kind of with our trees. So just marking our placement and we will add fullness next. So to create some fullness, I'm just going to apply the fibers horizontally, pinching off a bit, rolling it in our fingers to give us something a bit more manageable and more needle-like. Anchoring down some, pulling it away. Just trying to fill in that area and making it look a bit more realistic because the needles and the branches would go horizontally. So as you notice, there is some fibers that are just loose, which I'm just going to anchor them down just to fill in those places. So this application will go across the board for all the trees. Just laying the roving down horizontally, uh, felting it, anchoring it down just a bit, pulling away excess. And then I'll go back and use those fibers there or pull them away, whichever I feel necess necessary at the moment. So fill it in. I'll just anchor them down. So you don't need to go all the way to the bottom because you will be adding the lighter green on top of this which would appear to be the trees that are in front. So the bright green trees in the foreground, we'll apply them the same way we did the evergreen trees in the back. Indicating individual trees. You don't want to go all the way to the top. These are trees that are closer to you. And the same approach though is that the trees on the outer edges would be higher than the ones in the center and you do want to give some variety to the angle of your trees.
just a quicker way to apply it uh, horizontally just blocking it out putting those fibers down and then um, doing a bit of refinement after so we'll just anchor all that down going side to side though so as you notice that there are some bare areas which we really don't want the vertical line of the tree to be seen so we'll go back and fill that in make it a bit thicker So just thickening up that tree line at the base especially and it's okay to show a more spindly kind of top which is fine but fill it in as much as you feel necessary taking small bits just kind of giving to complete that spindly look at the top so if you just use a small tiny bit and zigzag So as you notice, there is just adding little bits, twisting it in my fingers, and doing a little zigzag just to kind of create that top of the tree spindly look. Just adding a little bit more to create a tree line within the mountain ranges. Just using little bits of green. I'll just take this moment to say though that uh, if you're planning on wet felting, this would be a good project to do that. Using your wet felting and needle felting skills. Just keep in mind though that this the project will shift, the fibers will shift, and your design will look a little bit different. But that being said, you can always needle felt, needle felt more detail once the, the mat is dry. And uh, there's just a few tips in your instructions uh, inside the kit uh, to help you out on how to get started with the wet felting if that's what you like to do. So just adding a little bit of green, creating tiny little trees. So just the same effect as what we did at the bottom. Indicating the tree line, indicating the tree, and then just kind of refining the edges of it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching Mariposa Wool and Mill Felting Basics and Kit Instruction video. So continue felting and to replenish your felting needs, come visit us at the farm market or online at the link on your screen. Stay tuned for more felting fun.